My fellow Americans, have you hit bottom yet? Are you not ashamed of yourself yet? What will it take to bring you out of your coma? You see that flag in the background? That is not your flag. It never was your flag. Hell, they might as well take those stars off of there and put Mickey D on there, or the PepsiCo circle, or the Coca-Cola sign. They might as well get the Federal Reserve Banking District Managers to sign on the dotted line because they own that flag. It's not your flag. So today, our conversation is simple. How does the 666 gang control the world? And it's in our face today. That's why we're talking about it. First, I will show you pictures of the puppets, mere pawns to the real power. The men who have the real power, you'll never see their faces. Okay, so you have to control the puppets. Second, how do you control the puppets? That's simple. You control the money. So first and foremost, control the buttons that print the fake Fiat paper, a.k.a. control the banks. Number three, under no circumstances are you to share the wealth with scum like Bravo Vamula. <laughs> no way, no hell no. You don't share with us. You don't share with the peasants. Number four, insert family members into all executive offices of the so-called elected regime, think Pepsi. And our little discussion today is on a basic level. We're talking about American corporate fascism 101. But if you want a more in-depth, political, doctorate level stuff, that is added at the end of the video for more advanced Americans. Okay, so what am I talking about PepsiCo? How does it fit in with the Trump regime, like I said, that's going to be in detail added on at the end of the video. And if these photos have not given you a clue yet, or you're simply lost, let me clear this mess up. As you know, sweatshop Princess Ivanka has been in the news lately. And today we have Indra Nuyi. Indra Knew ye. Yes, please don't throw up yet. Hang in there. But this is the story. And I must make a little disclaimer to people who are kind of new to the channel. It may seem like mainstream media and myself have something in common. And that would be true. We have one thing in common. We want to embarrass the sweatshop princess and the 38-year slumlord every chance we get. Now, that doesn't mean that I'm in with the mainstream media. No, I hate mainstream media just as much as you do. But it looks like the enemy, mainstream media, which is our enemy, it looks like we do have one thing in common with them. They want to bring down nepotism just as badly as you and I. They want to embarrass Ivanka, the sweatshop princess, every chance they get. And for that, I do well, I applaud them. So, how did they try to embarrass Ivanka just recently? A couple days ago, they said that Ivanka Trump is going to be the head of the World Bank. Well, that was just a bunch of bullshit, just to embarrass her. But now we find out that Ivanka Trump is indeed going to be involved in picking the head of the World Bank. Now, we've known that. I used to talk about this all the time. And some of you may even remember our little conversations we had on that. But before we go into a reminder, let's finish out the list. Remember how our conversation started today. How the 666 gang controls the world. Now we were on no number four, I believe. Let's go to number five. Number five is control the media that spins the lie. Well, that's, I'm not telling you there anything you don't already know, but... Some people are confused on the outer branches of the media. Think Alex Jonestein. Think Ann Coulter. Trust me, controlled opposition. 
But again, at the end of the video, I'm going to have more on Ann Coulter exposing her connection to PepsiCo. Okay, so, and then to control. When you're, uh, we're talking about the list there, how they control the world, I guess the last thing you would say is rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat 6.66 million times. They do it in all the branches of the government. Every executive position, every bank position, every corporate position that matters, they are in control. They have a puppet sitting at the top. Huh. We don't need to go into that. So that pretty much finish, that finishes out the basic list on how the 666 gang controls the world. But let's go back into a reminder. What we used to talk about last year, what their plan was. You see, they had an original plan, and we're talking about the Trump regime now. The plan was simple, almost childlike, when it comes to their metaphoric 4D chess game nonsense. I'll put a little reminder in there, or maybe there's some new people who wasn't, they, were, they weren't here during our conversations. So I have to repeat this. Their plan was that Kushner the Great, a.k.a. the Antichrist, a.k.a. the 38-year-old slumlord, was to announce victory in that region way over there in the desert that we call hell. After he announced victory, and remember, it's no coincidence, that just last month, Donald Trump said, Victory. He, see, these words are all planned out. But after it was going to be, all the credit was going to be given to the 38-year-old slumlord. It was his victory over there. Okay? And then he would raise his arms in glory like Caesar. And then Trump was to promote him to the head of the World Bank. This was their original plan. We used to talk about this all the time, especially on the Bravo Alternative Media channel when I used to have the Trump regime daily series before YouTube pretty much canceled me out on that. They didn't like what I had to talk about. But anyhow, okay, after this was their original plan to put Jared Kushner at the head of the World Bank. But you and I put a wrench into that plan. More on that in a moment. But let's go back to their original plan. By putting Jared Kushner at the head of the World Bank, that would have killed two birds with one stone. You see, that would have gotten the nepotistic duo, it would have got the sweatshop princess and the slumlord out of the White House. And then Donald Trump would have been done with the nepotism problem that he has. You see, Donald Trump knows, and all his advisors know, they have a problem with the royal nepotism with their base. Right now, their base is being real patient with them. But their base is running out of patience when it comes to the nepotism couple. So, actually, by getting them in the World Bank, that would get them out of the White House, and that would help Donald Trump get more votes in 2020, and then Pocahontas would have to go crying into her moccasins. And <laughs> we, won't, we won't even go there. Okay, so back to the monkey wrench I was talking about. That's jamming up their gears. You see, you and I are those nasty little wrenches that are jamming up their gears. Every time that you clicked on a video that talked about the 36, the 37-year-old slumlord, and every time you retweeted the sweatshop princess narrative, you and I helped put a stop to the royal nepotistic bloodline sickness of this so-called America. You and I helped embarrass them so much that now they're going to have a hard time putting this slumlord at the top of the World Bank. You see, we predicted it. And by us predicting it, predicting it, by us spreading the narrative, by us spreading the news, we effectively put a stop to one of the 666 puppets that they were going to put at the head of the World Bank. But don't, get, don't go patting yourself on the back too much because, because they're still going to get their puppet in there. You and I are still the peasants. You and I are still the unwashed masses. We have no power. We have no universal basic income. We walk around pick, picking up the breadcrumbs, and it's always going to be that way until Americans get some brass balls. And I am not 
optimistic about that. But we are still going to spread the word. We are still going to embarrass these fools. And trust me, just because they're rich does not mean that they're more intelligent than us. No, they are like childlike. Because they were spoiled, rotten, and given millions of dollars given to them. No, we are far superior in intelligence to them. We have street eyes, smarts. Everything that you and I have, we had to scratch it out of the dirt. We had to earn every penny we got. We didn't have it handed to us on a silver platter. No. We earned it. We fought for it. And that's why we are far, far superior than these scumbags. Yes. That is something they'll never be able to take away from us. So, in closing, for all you Bible-thumping neocon morons, look at your grandchildren who are no longer in positions of power, and then you will realize why somebody like Indra, Indra, now you can puke, why Indra must be promoted above your wretched asses. No, your grandchildren will be down on the bottom, and Indra will be at the top along with the sweatshop princess and the 38-year-old slumlord. But enough of this rant. Let's get to the more advanced level. Okay. Now, as some of you may not know, I have another channel. It's called Bravo Alternative Media. I used to have a daily show where I talked about the Trump regime. YouTube didn't like it. They canceled a few videos out. They pissed me off. I no longer do it. But I know you'd never be able to find this video. So I'm going to we're going to go ahead. I'm going to add this section, a little section of this video I talked about. And I think this was back in September, yeah, September 13th, 2017. And I talk about this situation. The Pepsi Corporation in bed with Donald Trump and we go into uh, Julia Hahn, and we go into Ann Coulter. And basically, this is an advanced level when it comes to the American corporate fascism. And I will add this. You may not like Bernie Sanders, the socialist, but he has one thing correct. One of the biggest problems in America are the billionaires who call the shots. We're talking about the 666 gang and all their power. They call the shots, and you and I are nothing but slaves to them. So I'll go ahead and let you watch this. Remember, this is me talking back in September of 2017. We've talked about this for a long time. Many of you know about this, but we have some newcomers, and we have to keep on spreading the word and teaching the newcomers. The Americans who are just coming out of the fog, they've been in a coma for so long, and we must help them. Marcus and Ann Coulter, Uncle Steve, they're playing their roles perfectly. So I guess it does make more sense when you look at it in the circus form. The right wing. I mean, these people are pathetic. Let's go into Ann Coulter, uh, because she's, she's never ever going to admit that she's taking money from Pepsi. Trust me, she's never, ever going to admit that. She will deny these claims to the high heaven. She will literally go to her deathbed denying the fact that no evil corporation has ever funded my narrative. No, I am Ann Coulter, the great. And quite frankly, it would take an army of investigators to filter through all the layers and layers of shills between Ann and Pepsi. So no. I'm not going to be able to give you any proof by way of a paycheck stub or anything like that. I might be able to offer up something even better. But remember, it's just not Pepsi. It's the billionaire Koch brothers. It's all these billionaires who pretend to be conservatives. Remember, they're part of the circus. Left wing versus the right wing. But let me offer up this because they really keep this girl in secret. Her name is Julia Hahn. Of course, she's one of them. She is extremely rich. She is the heiress of a Pepsi empire. Yes. Her grandfather 
literally has more money than families would need for 500 generations. And they plan on keeping it in the family, keeping it with the tribe. They're not going to share it, share it with you and I. What I find very, very strange is what kind of corporation has the power to camouflage what this little snowflake even looks like? I mean, she's in the White House. You would think that they would have pictures of her everywhere. But when you look for her picture, who has the power to camouflage, put two different faces out there, which I guess is just to confuse any wackos out there. If there's any wackos out there who don't like the idea of corporations in the government in the name of fascism, but if you do a search on Steve Bannon or Ann Coulter, I mean, there's pictures of them. You know exactly who they are. But when you do a search on Julia Hahn, you get two different pictures. Who has the power to do that? An evil corporation, of course. Now, when we're talking about evil corporations, you're going to have to do your research on this company on your own. This is very, very strange. They are a biotechnology company. They have worked with uh, aborted fetal cells, aborted fetal matter, and it's sick beyond belief. But what they do is they are trying to figure out this sugar, you know, this sweetness that they can put in the soft drinks and, you know, make it taste better. And apparently, of course, you know, you have to do your own research, but Pepsi did work with them for a while. But the thing is about this product, it intensifies flavors. But here's the weird part. The amounts are so small that they do not even put it in a, they don't even tell you it's in there on the label. The chemical compounds do not appear on the label. It will fall under a broad category of artificial flavors. Now, you know this company is no longer working with Pepsi because the word got out and they got embarrassed. But you know how this works. One company is sold to another, and before you know it, you have layers and layers of shills, and then you still won't find out because it's not on the label. Not on the label. Okay, so before we end this segment, people are maybe wondering, well, what the hell are you talking about Julia Hahn for? Who cares? So what? She's a Pepsi heiress to a Pepsi fortune. She's in the White House, so what? Well, here's the problem I have with these people who, from Beverly Hills, they have millions and millions of dollars, and they make laws that you and I have to abide by, and they're part of a tribe that despises us. What I, the problem I have here is because we're talking about Ann Coulter. Ann Coulter has said that she wants this young snowflake Han to be the next president. That, well, as soon as she can, Ann Coulter says of Han, I want her to be the president as soon as she's able to be. Okay, so this is this is just more proof. To me, this is more proof that when you have Steve Bannon representing, backing up Pedo Milo, and then you got Pepsi Ann who wants a Pepsi heiress, somebody from their tribe who already rule over us, and Ann Coulter wants this corporation, Snowflake, to be our president of the United States. It's all crazy. It's all crazy. And there, there has to be somebody who documents that Ann Coulter is not who she claims to be. Steve Bannon is not who he claims to be. I mean, they are supporting people like Pedo Milo, and they're supporting Pepsi heiresses who really just want to rule over us. They're not for us, the working people. They're not for us, the unwashed masses. It's a big joke. It's a big scam, and we must expose Uncle Steve. We must expose Pepsi Ann for the frauds they are. If they want to do something good, tell them to go out to UC Berkeley and shut this establishment down. Shut down all the public schools. No! Pedo Milo, Uncle Steve, and Pepsi Ann can go to hell. They're playing some sort of stupid circus on us. They're playing us for fools. And now you know why they talk about putting Indra at the head of the World Bank and not a real American.